Oh, well, thank you for this very rich session that we had and we come towards the end of uh, today's discussion, only today's discussion, because actually this is the real beginning. Um, we have the pleasure of having with us uh, two European members of the Parliament, uh, members of the European Parliament, <laughs> apologies, uh, Madame Ferring and uh, Mr. Ninas. Um, who I also saw yesterday. He's very active at the theater forum at the moment. And um, um, just to kind of launch this discussion, because we felt as a working group, it was very important to reach out to you both, um, to the European Parliament, being that um, greening is a very international, is a very European wide topic. It's not something we can just carry on on ourselves. We need you to support us to be able to um, make the change happening. And we heard that this morning from very young people, 15, 16 years old activists, who said how we, who told us how we can make changes from very small uh, practices to, to larger um, actions. We heard from people who were working on the policy side in their uh, particular countries, on the funders as well. And we heard from, from artists and from um, people um, who were very much involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, running of, of theatres and the cultural sector, how they can make changes. Now we're very curious to hear from you how you have been seeing this process happening. You are following closely the European uh, policy making. Um, in the code committee, there have been uh, two reports. The report that you have led, Madame Ferring, um, on um, effective measures to green Erasmus Plus, Creative Europe, um, and the European Solidarity Corps. And then there was also the opinion uh, in which you were involved as shadow rapporteur on sustainable uh, on the sustainable Europe investment plan, how to finance the Green Deal. And I've also read that you were involved as well in um, another uh, report on uh, sustainable tourism. Um, so I think you are the right person <laughs> to speak and um, to ask you um, what kind of process do you think um, the cultural sh sector should take, what instruments there are at the European policy level to support um, a process of change in the available funding uh, programs and in the future uh, funding programs of the next uh, MFF. The floor is yours, Madame Ferring. Hello. First, I would like to thank you for your invitation. I'm very pleased to see you and I'm very pleased to, to, to see my colleague uh, Niklas Ninas because we unfortunately have uh, not, not so much occasion to meet in this uh, very strange period. So, um, as you said, uh, we have a very uh, important role to play in the, as um, policy makers because um, we have many occasions to earmark culture in the European policies. Um, as you say, we, are, we, are, we have worked on the Green Deal issues uh, uh, since the beginning of our mandate. And today at the European level, we work every day to increase the importance of the green transition. Today, 30% in the new budget of the EU that has been uh, decided yesterday is earmarked for the Green Deal. So uh, culture, we think culture, should be as always the cornerstone of the change. And, and that's why it's so important that culture, um, for culture to be in the heart of the policies. Uh, as you said, uh, I work on many files on this topic. Um, first, um, I'm, I want to present myself. I'm a French member of uh, the uh, Renew Group, and I'm a coordinator in the Col Com Culture Committee uh, for my for my group. So I, I work uh, very intensely on this uh, on, on different topics. And as you said, I've been a rapporteur of an on an initiative for the greening of the EU programs on education and culture. Even though the biggest part of my report was on the Erasmus Plus program. 
uh, culture was at the end of my reflection because there, are, there was a large um, part of this report about mobility. It, uh, it's a concern in every program, mainly on Erasmus+, Plus, but as well on the European Solidarity Corp for youngest, for voluntary programs, and uh, on the creative issue as well. Um, on culture, I had two reflections, um, and I had two principles. Of course, not to intervene on the creation, which is the field of the artists and the authors. The second was to have a bottom-up up approach uh, to systematize uh, good practices that emerge in the framework uh, of the Creative Europe program. As you said, you have heard young people this morning uh, uh, having new ideas, nice ideas, maybe simple ideas. And for my... I, I'm, I have to tell you about, about my experience because I've met a lot of uh, stakeholders as I was uh, writing and working on this report. I have attended uh, as well uh, the Berlinale where many roundtables on this topic were uh, organized and uh, also the, um, the Etat Généraux des Festivals in Avignon uh, that was organized by the minist French Ministry of Culture. And there were a lot of uh, reflection on the greening issue. Uh, and I've heard many ideas, uh, very interesting and very simple. So we have to hear from the, from the experience of the artists, technicians, and many ideas were on eco-design whether we are talking about theater sets, I think there was an idea this morning about these questions, how you construct them and you can reuse. Uh, I have this experience in my city where uh, some sets were, were built with uh, local arti artists and local uh, um, people, the worker. And so it was a, a very good thing without transportation, you know, with uh, local um, materials. So it was a, a very good experience. Um, I have uh, as well ideas about uh, female location because we don't always need to go further and further, further to, to, to find good places. And that, that is related as well with social issues because we have to work on the um, status of uh, uh, you know, the, the social point of um, uh, we will soon begin to work on this because we, we have so many uh, differences in the wages in the sector and different status. So sometimes it's cheaper to go very far away, but it's not a good solution. So we have to work on this social issue. Of course, we have a point as well about technologies, and that is very interesting because uh, there are many progress that uh, um, are been uh, realizing in the lighting, in energy, and as well in the question of uh, thermic insulation of uh, theaters. So that is uh, connected and related with uh, uh, technology, techniques, and there are uh, as well many programs in the EU, you know, as uh, uh, Horizon Europe that can act on this point. And we have uh, uh, some structure that, uh, like uh, uh, European Institute of Technologies that uh, have a, a special um, field on this, this reflection. Uh, there is also, uh, many partner partnership to build with cities because we have the um, reflection on the um, link between urban transportation and the schedules of the shows, by, for example. Uh, we have um, a network of European cities called uh, Eurocities that works on this topic and uh, I um, I, I have met them and I met them in my cities as well. Um, that's why, so, you know, all these points um, I worked on and they are today in the resolution that uh, we have uh, voted in the, 
European Parliament. Um, and in this regard, the Charter for Creative Europe projects and the wide circulation of good and practices guides seems to be the best idea. So the report has also explored other trades such as the creation of a network of uh, climate and sustainability consultants. It's a new uh, job, very important new job to advise project leaders and Creative Europe offices. Uh, what would I like to say? Yes, uh, today we have to do and to achieve this progress. But first, as the sector is in a very delicate uh, situation, it's hard to ask for groundbreaking changes we have without uh, sufficient fundings. This is why uh, our call committee, where Niklas and I are members, fought a lot for an increase of the Creative Europe programs to, uh, budget. And uh, in addition, uh, and uh, in our name of uh, MEP name, I'm proud to announce that we managed to add uh, 6,000 million euros to this program's envelope for the next EU budget. Moreover, we have worked intensively so that the cultural and creative actor hit by the consequences of the pandemic could get a decent share of the recovery plan. And the conclusion of his work is a resolution uh, adopted by a large majority of the European Parliament last September and urging member states to allocate at least 2% of their national recovery plan to cultural and creative sectors. We have to fight again and again for this because it's not uh, adopted yet. But um, and today, uh, only three, uh, three countries on 27 uh, member states have presented a um, recovery plan for culture. You know, it's uh, Germany, Italy, and France. So we have to act and to fight for this again and again. So I wouldn't be uh, longer, uh, no more longer. Uh, I'm here to answer your question, I think, uh, my colleague uh, Niklas Ninas uh, would like to add something and uh, I'm here to answer your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Madame Fareng. You, you touched upon quite a lot of issues that we actually wanted to ask you. <laughs> so you, you have been answering you know, already quite a lot of our questions. Um, but indeed, I mean, um, we are in difficult times. Um, the recovery plans are absolutely needed uh, for our sector because it touches on, on the heart of what we do, um, being mobile, being working with, with a live audience. Um, and um, it's interesting to, to observe that um, it takes time for countries to actually um, take that into their, their plans. They look at the larger industries, uh, but they seem to forget that actually our sectors, dare I say that this word, because we have just been also acknowledging the intrinsic value of, of art and even the fact that um, the sector shouldn't be an instrument to kind of advocate the, the, the green notion. But at the same time, we are also uh, an economic industry. We, we employ people, we, we, we create jobs, we, we generate tourism, etc. So um, do you see any advice, would you have any advice to us how we can um, um, ask our politicians in the member states to, to include culture in, and the, the green, of course, the green notion, but we will include culture in their recovery plans. It's a bit aside of what we are discussing now, but nevertheless, the, the green is an overarching scope and uh, perhaps you can answer already this question. And then, Niklas, I will definitely come to you. <laughs> Would you like to answer this question? It's my turn to answer. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, so I think first you can talk about the work we are doing in the European Parliament because there are many things to, to, to say today. We have uh, this uh, resolution. We have a fight in this time because, you know, uh, for the recovery plan, there is a text for the recovery and resilience facility 
where we want to earmark this at least two person, we have to fight again and we are doing it in this, uh, at the time we are speaking with, uh, with Niklas and I hope it will be adopted, but it's really, it's a fight. Uh, also, you, you have something to find in the cohesion policy and uh, the European, um, the regional funds, because we have added the mention of culture everywhere. Uh, you, you have the, this REACT EU program where culture has been added because, as you said, it's for the culture, but it's linked with uh, tourism. And Europe has, um, has raised this uh, topic of, of tourism, but it's not a, something, you know, you have to, to, to take some ways to talk about culture with uh, something that can be considered be, because it's not true, but uh, tourism is a good uh, way to, to, to talk about culture. So um, I know we have different culture. We are from uh, different countries. In some culture is maybe considered as more important for our leaders, political leaders. Uh, so you have this European work that is very, very important and shared by, by the majority of the uh, member of parliament. So talk about, about it, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, so I'll turn to my colleague uh, Zulke Larvani, who will introduce uh, the conversation with Niklas Minas. Yes, hello everybody. Hello to all European colleagues. Um, I'm very happy to introduce our second guest in this concluding session. Welcome Niklas Minas. I have seen you already, so I know you are here. Thank you so much for joining us and also following uh, the European Theatre Forum. Mr. Ninas, you were elected last year member of the European Parliament uh, as a German citizen and you're part of the group of Greens. You have been contributing in Parliament to make the voice of culture heard quite a lot uh, as your colleague, um, Ms. Fareng as well. Since the beginning of the pandemic, actually with first an open letter to the EU, um, with supporting the demand of the 2% for culture that we just um, addressed. You're also the coordinator of the European Parliament uh, Cultural Creators Friendship Group, a sort of coalition in the European Parliament with members from six different political groups. And the aim of this group actually is to improve the whole European cultural ecosystem. So we are sure we have the right speaker here. Please, Mr. Ninas, for the statement. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for inviting me today again after I spoke yesterday concerning the, um, the workers' rights, which is also a very important issue that we're tackling in the CCFG, in the Cultural Creators Friendship Group, um, and also in the European Parliament, obviously. Um, now for the greening, um, I was very interested in hearing uh, all these uh, statements that, that were made, and it's good to see uh, Laurence here. Um, in this meeting as well, since, since she was the rapporteur for the initiative report of the CULT committee concerning the greening of the cultural sectors. And um, so we, we can see that we have already done a lot of research, uh, one for one part as the European Parliament, but then also um, from the other part, um, from, the, from the sector itself, from all the members and all the, the involved actors um, in the sector. And uh, so the research is done. A lot of people have uh, proposed different strategies and ideas. And I have to say, when I heard about this report the first time, I was a little bit skeptical because I think that if we talk about only about how can we reduce carbon dioxide emissions in the cultural sector, I think that would be too easy or too non relevant because to be quite honest if we're talking about transport and that is a re relevant um, issue um, however it is one that in my understanding falls rather under the question of for example the transport committee in which we consider how can we ensure that logistics and uh, personal transport um, are carbon dioxide free and if that's solved then the biggest issue for the cultural sector will be gone as well uh, the next idea would be the production. Yes, the production firms, um, and uh, depending on the set, you, you, you have more resources used and so on and so forth. However, um, this is also an issue that could be solved in other directions. 
for example, in the uh, European Parliament, in the in the ITRE committee, which is re um, uh, responsible for industry. Um, so if we have a general carbon free production of goods in Europe, then this problem is mainly taken care of as well. So where really goes the idea of greening of the cultural sector? And I think the biggest impact that the whole cultural sector has always had had and will always have is not so much on their direct um, touching of production or the direct Im input of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, but the biggest impact that the cultural and creative sector has is always into the society, into the people that are listening, that are following, that are um, touched by the ideas and uh, the art that is created. And this um, power, this influence needs to be used in order for the greening. That is the real question that we need to solve. And that is the real um, issue that we need to uh, tackle with the, um, with the culture and creative sector. If we want a carbon free Europe by 2050, if we want a future for this planet that has a huge biodiversity, if we want a better future for our children and grandchildren, then we need a change of society. We don't just need to change the way we produce. We don't just need to, way, uh, to change the way we travel uh, and do logistics. We need to change as a society and as persons, and we need to reevaluate our values and our, um, our way of life. And the only force that can deliver on this is not politics, is not um, is, is, is not uh, a science. It is always education and arts and culture. Because culture has this huge impact on the society, can really question everything we do as society. And that is, I believe, the biggest um, challenge also for the culture creative sector to actually deliver on this if they want so. Because I, as politician, cannot, will not, and must not tell artists what to do and what to focus in their arts. The art is free and it is, it is especially free from the influence of any politicians. But if we want to deliver on, um, on the uh, greening of the planet, but also on the greening of society, and in that I believe it is important to also talk about the, um, the social aspects of the change that we are about to happen. That's a big question that we need to discuss and need to answer probably also in the cultural sense. Then we need to follow a discussion or we need to start a discussion in the cultural sector that is led by scientific evidence. And I believe the first instance that, that for, my per, for, for me personally is important for the sector is uh, something called, in German, it uh, has the funny name of BNE, in, uh, in English, I don't know if there's a similar abbreviation, but it's called um, the Education for Sustainable Development. And that is something um, in which I worked on previously and that showed me if we want to educate the whole um, continent on this issue, on this very important issue, we need to start by the multiplicators. So we need to ensure that everybody who is interested in, in talking about this issue gets proper education, gets all the information that they want and that they need. So um, examples that, that I heard earlier from, from several speakers of production um, uh, helpers and education in the production sectors um, is very much needed. And I think that is something that we must deliver on. It is good that we um, have this initiative report on greening of the European Parliament and the European programs, which will enable, for example, that Creative Europe will have a um, stricter standard on um, greening uh, initiatives and so on. That is definitely a good place to learn. But I think we need more initiatives to go into all of the member states because that is what, what's missing at the moment, and to help all the member states to develop more on education, on a sustainable development, not just on CO2 reduction, but on the whole uh, chain of sustainable development, which I deem is very important for the whole societal um, discussion that only culture can really lead to. Um, I want to leave it here. I just want to uh, mention two words concerning uh, the question that um, that was asked earlier to Laurence because I want to mention something on there as well. Um, 
how can we, we we've heard Laurence has said it already we have an increase of 600 million euros for the creative euro program we also have an increase of 2.2 billion euros for the uh, erasmus plus um program bringing those two programs to 2.2 billion for the creative europe and uh, 23.5 billion for the erasmus program um, this is great uh, news we have we are still fighting to get the possibility for the rf funding to be um, delivered into the member states there will definitely be the possibility but we want obviously uh, to make it mandatory for the for the member states to actually spend the money on culture um, there is in React EU, as Laurent said, the possibility to get funding for uh, for culture. There is uh, the possibility in all the structure funds. I have to repeat that in all the structure funds that are already existing, there is the possibility to get funding for structure um, infrastructure for the creative and uh, cultural sector. And uh, there's also in the ESF the possibility to use that ESF funding to, for example, um, promote um, education in in the arts um to to um to access uh, schools and, and deliver on uh, musical schools and so on this is possible with the esf so with all the with all the funds that we have here's my message to the to everybody who's 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 looking for more funding and who's who's asking what can we do get politically involved it really depends on what the regions and the member states do with the money and they are the ones that program right now um, how to use and how to spend this money that we are allocating from the European Union. In every instance, there is somehow the possibility to use it for cultural purposes. It is rarely done because there's no interest um, or no knowledge of it on the ground on the um, issue uh, where the people are working on, so on, in the regions. Um, so this is the place where you need to get involved, where you need to go to your regional department, to your um, managing authority in your member state, in your region, and tell them now that you want support for the cultural sector, that you need either from this or that or that um, structural, social or whatever fund support for, for the uh, creative sector um, and your project in the area. If that's written down, everybody in the area and in the region can apply for funding if it's not written down then it's not a, not a possibility so please get involved right now into the political process of programming those funds and that's uh, where i'll leave it away thank you <laughs> thank you very much indeed uh, madame Fareng, would you like to comment to what uh, miss nina said uh, uh, is abs Nina is absolutely right. You know, in this time where we are beginning the new uh, uh, regional fund uh, programs, and uh, there is this possibility uh, to to get money from the region, and that's uh, very important in policies. And I think uh, culture has to be more local, uh, mostly in this time, because uh, you see, you can't only have big national policies. We need local policies as well. And uh, I followed for my region the uh, different topic and um, I read this point, there's no enough culture, but you have the possibility. And what I, when I met a cultural actor, I tell them the same thing that uh, Nicolas said, go and see your local um, uh, politician response responsible and ask them for that that's uh, a very huge opportunity for them i absolutely agree thank you very much i think we have my i have my colleagues from the working group who, who perhaps also might raise or want to ask you uh, a question um i see Fiennia and thomas visible i wonder if elizabeth is there um i can't see the others um, who would like to start with the first question? Evgenia, yes, please. Yes, hello, and thank you both very much for joining us uh, today uh, for this concluding discussion. Um, uh, I would like to say that the report uh, of the cult community, I, I thought it was extremely thorough and comprehensive, um, which is a, a great ground, uh, hopefully forbidding further policies in this direction. And I also want to say I couldn't agree more with um, Nicholas Ninas about the agency of the cultural sector and the important role it can play. So my question is this, 
Um, is there a plan uh, in the foreseeable future to expand the, the policy that has just been applied on Creative Europe and Erasmus Plus to other areas in the um, culture policies of the EU? And is there a way to bypass and expedite the change to bypass the reluctance of certain national um, governments in this respect? Difficult question. <laughs> Who like to take uh, the answer? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it a try at least. Um, I don't know if there's a plan to to um, increase the. Sorry, I need to, to shut this down for a second. Um, to increase the 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 um, implementation on other uh, cultural funds, um, and for the question um, on how to comply with member states that are not well working on on the rules of. of um, Creative Europe, for example. Um, I know of examples, for example, uh, from Poland, where Poland doesn't pay up the, um, the needed fee, the additional fee that the member states needs to pay, and therefore a lot of projects could not work out. This is um, trem tremendous horrible, because I think that uh, there's really the try to, to under undermine um, liberal arts again and again from several uh, authoristic member states. However, the uh, possibility that you can do and that I know has been done is to get involved with a different project. Because if the main project um, project here is from a different country, then this country has to pay up the main, main fee and you can run as a, a small participant project. I know this is not ideal, but it is a way to mm -hmm. still uh, deliver on these issues. Yeah, very interesting. Thank you. Madame Faring? Yes, if uh, it's difficult to intervene in the European policies, but we have, uh, you know, in the recovery plan, we have uh, this uh, right of low condi conditionality that we are fighting for again and again. It's uh, more or less agreed, but we have some discussion with uh, tough countries as uh, Hungary or Poland, but. Um, uh, our negotiators and all the parliaments is fighting, uh, not all, but most of the, the MEP are fighting for that and my group is doing that. That's the first thing I wanted to say. The other one is that we, are, we can have uh, as well uh, transversal policies. You maybe have heard about this project of the European Commission that is called BAOS project. Uh, that is, it's it's the beginning and it's not uh, very clear. So we have to, to, to make our work of, uh, uh, in the parliament about this topic. But the idea is, to, is to, to achieve something with artists, creators, um, all over the countries. So maybe there is something to do to get a kind of uh, European status for artists. And this can bypass sometimes the, the problem with uh, some kind of uh, countries and uh, uh, you know the problem that we have. Thank you. Yeah, a very interesting idea and uh, creating a safe haven actually for our artists. I think we we actually, have got several I... messages. Oh, sorry, to close down. Oh. But <laughs> final words. I thought you had to leave. <laughs> yes, yes, I have to leave. But I just want to add one thing uh, because uh, Laurence mentioned something very good there. Um, one issue that I want to tackle um, in the upcoming term, or in this term, um, is the question of how funding is distributed. We know of several member states, so I mean national funding uh, for culture, and we know of several member states that are distributing um, funding only under certain rules that um, precede their uh, ideology. For example, in Poland, you only get funding if you are compliant with the uh, trigger words uh, state, god, nation. And if your project doesn't have anything to do with that or is not in compliance with that, is critical with god or the state or the nation, then, then you don't get any funding. And this is something that we cannot accept, that we cannot um, have possible in Europe because it diminishes the freedom of the arts. And therefore, I want to ensure that we have a, a common rule set for, for cultural funding in Europe um, that ensures that we have a 
playing level field in every member state that everybody who is an artist can benefit of the freedom of the arts and therefore get funding for their project and that all the funding is only based on quality and not on um, ideologic um, um, ideas of the government. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we have to close this session, how eager we are to continue the discussion, but we hope we find another moment. Many thanks to Madame Farin, to Mr. Ninas, and to my colleagues uh, who have been uh, helping us to, to make this, um, I hope you will agree with this, an interesting session. Um, this is only the start, we, we see it, we see it as a process uh, for the theatre forum to, to continue the discussions, so surely you will hear more from us in the, the coming weeks or months, uh, but in the meantime, I also would like to sincerely thank you on behalf of the whole culture community for your immense efforts that you do to, to defend the culture sector to defend also a good uh, support in, in, um, in funding. Um, we need it more than ever and uh, we're very grateful for all the efforts that you take. Be assured of that. So with that and without further ado, I think Gina is probably and Ian is probably, ta or probably taking over to tell the next step for this afternoon. Thank you. And the discussion continues in the piano room, actually, if you want to have more exchange. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for these very interesting last talks for the day and the really great inspirational speech by Niklas Ninas. We conclude this second day now we thank all the speakers we thank everyone for their attention of course we will meet back tomorrow at 9 15 for a day dedicated to european theaters as a public space and to international collaborations and to conclude of course together these three days of work and exchange but until then uh, we are inviting you to the theater we want to encourage uh, everyone to join my colleagues at Staatsschauspiel Dresden for the 10th edition of the Fast Forward Festival for Young Stage Directors, which starts today at 2.15 and will be happening, of course, online. The link uh, www.fast4w.art can be found on the European Theatre Forum's website. Please continue to use the forum platform to, to continue the interesting discussions uh, on sustainability in the theater and performing arts sector uh, in the piano room, on the platform, or, and the network among each other. We will show uh, fruitful meetings. See you. See you.